home groups. Love you guys. And, you know, super excited that uh, you all are going to be able to meet together soon in person. I know that's going to be a process. We all know that. Uh, and, you know, for sure, some of you will be comfortable. Some of you may be Zooming in, like we're going to work on, an, on a hybrid for that. Um, but we do really see the time where you guys are going to gather together coming soon. And so thank God for that, you know, and just thank God for his faithfulness to all of us over the last couple of months. And, you know, I'm sure that the adversary thought that he could leverage this pandemic to really create a disconnect and division in the church, but so grateful that God has provided us ways to stay connected together and that we've still been able to continue to unite uh, over the word of God and to pray for one another and to even reach our community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So thank the Lord for that. Hey, we've been um, working through this really seminal topic of the glory of God and how Remember, glory is the manifestation of the um, everlasting perfections of God, his holiness, you know, his value, his worth, his magnificence, his greatness. When God is glorifying himself, it is the manifestation. We're seeing tangibly who he is. And, you know, we're really able to engage in that as Christians. We're able to put ourselves in a position where we can experience and express the glory of God. Uh, and you know, the alternative is true. We're able to um, avoid that. We're able to put ourselves in bad positions where our life is really lacking in experience of God's glory or the opportunity to express it. And certainly as Christians who love the Lord, you know, we want to always be living in that place where we're getting everything that we can out of our relationship with God. So we've talked about the disciplines, right? Spiritual disciplines. Matthew chapter 6, giving and praying and fasting and how important, you know, all of those things are in really living as closely as we can to the glory of the Lord and being able to say, just like Moses did to the Lord, show me your glory. Now we're going to begin to talk about another piece of putting ourselves, positioning ourselves in the best place possible to experience and express the glory of God. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit because, listen, you can't experience and express the glory of God apart from the Spirit of God. Everything in your life, you know, and let me just say this, there's so much misunderstanding when it comes to the Holy Spirit. I think that in many ways, theologically, uh, for most people, we've got the Father down, we've got the Son down, like we understand the uh, who the Father is and, and what He desires to do and, and His role in sal our salvation. We understand the Son and what the Son sacrificed for us and how our lives are supposed to be oriented around the Son. And, and yet, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, I think that there's a lot of misunderstanding. You know, there for sure has been a lot of abuse of the Holy Spirit or abuses in the name of the Holy Spirit that I think produce in some people a fear. You know, you're, it's almost as if when you begin to talk about the Holy Spirit, there's a fear, there's a hesitancy, you know, for uh, particular people who may have looked at um, Pentecostal churches or charismatic churches um, as kind of going overboard in the experience of the Holy Spirit because you've seen something like that. Now it's like, well, you know, I don't want to go there. I don't want to be swinging from the chandeliers. I don't want to be doing things that just so clearly are not, you know, conveyed in the scriptures. And so this is what happens. You swing to an unhealthy side of that pendulum. You know, you're, you put yourself in a position where, you know, you're so desperate to avoid an extreme, you shift to a complete other extreme. And as a result, you have a truncated trinity. What do I mean when I say truncated tr trinity? I mean you've pared down the trinity, the, tr the trinity, excuse me. You've pared it down. You know, you have reduced the trinity almost to two persons instead of three. And let me just say to you that Satan is so st strategic. Like this is his desire. He will reinforce an abuse so that it produces uh, an alternative extreme that can be just as harmful to the Christian. Look, you need the Holy Spirit. Remember with me 
that the Holy Spirit is God, right? Omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, that he is equal with the Father and Son. There may be order, there may be roles, but the Holy Spirit is as much God as the Father is God and as the Son is God. And in fact, for the Christian, you remember Jesus said to his disciples, it is to your advantage that I go away. I mean, think about that. Like if you were living in the time of Christ, how awesome would it have been to walk with Jesus? And I think even now we think, man, I wish I could have lived when Jesus lived. My Christian life would have been so much more robust if I was living during the days of Jesus. And yet Jesus says this, it is to your advantage, right? Advantage Christian, advantage in the ascension, because as the Son ascended, this, the promise of the Father, the empowering of the Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost. So your advantage in your relationship with God comes with a living relationship with the Holy Spirit. And over the next four weeks, we're going we're gonna to talk about that. We're going to clear up a lot of theological misunderstanding concerning the Spirit of God. But we're going to also learn how to have a living relationship with the Holy Spirit who dwells within each of us. And as you and I live like this, as you and I choose to live this lifestyle, as we, as we move away from consumer Christianity, right, which is just about getting our felt needs met, not really living as disciples, as we choose that empowered life, that Christian life, that unique life, that distinct life that is that is rooted in the Spirit of God. Listen, you will see God do amazing and mighty things, not only in you, but also through you. The next four weeks are guaranteed, if you're willing, you know, if you're humble and you're willing to receive what the Scripture has to say, these next four weeks could change your life forever. Father, thank you. I pray that you bless my brothers and sisters, that you would really uh, just prepare us for what you have for us in your word. And God, as we receive the scriptures and apply them to our lives, Lord, we pray that you would just bring dynamic and radical change to us, to our families, to our city, to our nation, to our world. In Jesus' name, amen.